Falling for Lucy, written by Heather B. Moore, narrated by Exy Sands. 1. It was raining again. Well, it is Seattle, Lucy thought. But did it have to rain in July? She pushed open the door to the bookstore where she was interviewing for a job. If she got the job, it would be her third job this year. No, she wasn't a college graduate with a great job like her older sister Sydney had in Santa Rosa. Sydney was the VP of a software firm. No, Lucy wasn't like her younger brother, who'd graduated college in three years and was now getting his master's. Lucy was Lucy. At least that was what she'd overheard her whole life. She seemed to fail at everything she tried. She'd been cut from the basketball team her junior year. She'd never been chosen for a solo with the school choir. No matter how hard she studied, she always got at least one B+. She changed her major three times in her first two semesters of college at the University of Washington. Her parents weren't even surprised when she told them she was dropping out of college. In fact, she suspected they were surprised she'd lasted two whole semesters. It was probably because she liked to read and learn, just not while surrounded by eager beaver-type students. As she stepped into the bookstore, the sound of rain and traffic faded, and the familiar smell of books soaked into her, making her feel at ease, even though she'd come for a job interview. The bookstore was small and quaint, and every shelf of the rows of bookcases was stuffed with books, some of them haphazardly. Lucy wanted to start straightening a nearby shelf, but she restrained herself. A phone rang in the direction of the sales register desk, and a door opened somewhere in the back. Coming, said a deep, gravelly voice. Through the shelves, Lucy caught sight of an older man, tall, lean, a slight hunch to his shoulders. He sported a short, gray goatee, and a pencil was tucked behind one ear. He wore reading glasses propped on top of his head. Park's bookstore, he said after picking up the phone. Lucy moved down another aisle, not wanting to eavesdrop, although she was pretty certain the man was Mr. Parks, the owner and the one who'd be interviewing her soon. No, that comes in Thursday, he continued. Do you want me to put it on hold for you? He removed the pencil from behind his ear and scribbled something down. A moment later, he hung up the phone. It was at that moment Lucy bumped into a tall, narrow table, knocking it hard enough to upset the stacks of books. Several of them tumbled onto the floor. She bent to scoop up the latest hardbacks of John Grisham and James Rollins. Before she was able to set the display to rights, she sensed that someone was watching her. She looked up to see Mr. Parks peering down at her, his dark green eyes framed by the reading glasses perched on his nose. I'm so sorry, Lucy rushed to say. I didn't mean to knock this over. No one ever does, Mr. Parks said in a kind voice. He bent to retrieve the final book from the floor. I'm afraid my son doesn't have the organizational skills that his mother did. The books are continually toppling over at one place or another. He set the book on the crowded display table, and Lucy moved it so that it wasn't so close to the edge. Say, Mr. Parks continued, I like your arrangement. Do you need a job? He'd said it in jest, but Lucy realized he didn't know who she was. Actually, I do need a job. Lucy gave him a nervous smile, hoping he didn't think she was too presumptuous. I'm Lucy Morley, and I'm here for a job interview. Mr. Parks narrowed his eyes as if he had no idea what she was talking about. You're here for an interview? Did my son call you? Uh, Lucy scrambled for a reply. You emailed me when I answered an online ad? We made all the arrangements by email. What if she was here on the wrong day? Or even worse, what if this was the wrong bookstore? Was this store a chain? She pulled out her phone and scrolled through her emails. She pulled up the last email she'd received from Mr. Parks. She held out the phone so Mr. Parks could see it. He adjusted his reading glasses and read through the email. That's us, all right. Although I'm not the one who emailed you. It appears that my son went behind my back. Lucy stared at the man. She'd stepped into the middle of a family feud, it seemed. I, I, I didn't realize. I, I'm sorry for knocking over the books, and I'll be going now. She pocketed her phone and turned away quickly so that Mr. Parks wouldn't see her face flaming with embarrassment. She was almost to the front door when Mr. Parks said, wait a minute. Lucy paused, her heart hammering. 
She didn't really want to turn around and face the man because she didn't trust herself not to cry. It wasn't really that she'd cry over a mistaken interview, but nothing had gone right this week. Not only had she been fired from the neighborhood deli on Wednesday, but she had late fees on her car payment because the check she'd mailed had bounced, incurring even more fees, and her roommate was moving, which meant Lucy would be stuck with the full rent unless she could find someone in the next two weeks. It seemed that Mr. Parks was waiting for her to turn around. She exhaled slowly, then turned. He held up a rather large cell phone. My son tells me I need to check my texts more often, but I tell him I don't need any sort of fancy device. It looks like he sent me a text about the interview. He was planning on being here too, but this morning he went to help his sister move. Mr. Parks motioned her toward the cash register. Come on back, we might as well do the interview or I'll be sure to hear about it from Adam. She assumed that Adam was the son who'd posted the job opening. If there's not an opening, then I don't want to waste your time. Lucy was mortified enough, and spending even more time with Mr. Parks would be pointless. Mr. Parks gave her a faint smile. Last year, I made my son the legal owner, so you might say he's the boss. Come on, I need to report back to him. All right, Lucy said, although she still felt reluctant and very, very awkward. Mr. Parks pulled the chair from a reading nook and moved it toward the sales register desk. Then he perched on the stool behind the counter. This gives me the best view of any customer coming into the shop. Lucy sat in the proffered chair and clasped her hands together. Now, tell me about yourself, Mr. Parks said. Lucy hadn't expected this. She didn't know if he meant personal things or academic things. I've gone to college for a year, she said. And until recently, I was working at a deli. She hoped he wouldn't ask why she wasn't working there anymore. She didn't know if she could adequately explain that she'd almost been arrested for stealing when she, in fact, was only giving an extra sandwich to a guy she thought was homeless. Apparently, he was hitting up all the eating establishments in town. Do you like to read? Mr. Parks asked. This, Lucy could easily answer. I love to read. Sometimes to her detriment. It wasn't exactly her fault that she discovered Brandon Sanderson books her second week in college. She blamed that on her English teacher for putting one of his series on the recommended reading list. Lucy read the first Mistborn book and was hooked. Mr. Parks nodded. What hours are you available? Your uh, son posted it as a part-time job, but I can work more hours if needed. Would you consider yourself good at organizing? Mr. Parks asked. She hesitated. It would be so easy to say yes, especially if that was Mr. Parks' main concern. She could definitely help organize the bookstore. She sighed and looked directly into the man's green eyes. I can organize, and I would be happy to organize the bookstore if you hire me. Though, I must say that I'm not a generally organized person. Mr. Parks chuckled. I like your answer. I like honest people, and you're honest. Lucy flushed at the compliment. Great to meet you, Miss Lucy, Mr. Parks said. I'll let Adam know that I wholeheartedly approve of you. He leaned forward. Can you start today? Two. Adam moved the dresser into place in the spare bedroom of his dad's house. It used to be his sister Darcy's room when she was a kid. And now, after divorce number three, she was moving back home with dad. Again. It had been an unfortunate pattern with his sister. If the pattern held true, a few weeks or months would pass and she'd find a new boyfriend and move out again. Thankfully, she didn't have any kids of her own, so she wasn't dragging a child through all of her mud. Home, sweet home, Darcy walked into the bedroom. She blew out a cloud of cigarette smoke. Adam straightened. Dad doesn't want you smoking in the house. His sister pursed her red painted lips and shrugged. He's not here. Adam exhaled. He'd spent four hours moving her stuff, and now she wanted to throw attitude around? If you're gonna live here rent-free, you need to respect Dad's wishes. Darcy stubbed her cigarette on the dresser. The dark wood was marred enough with what Adam suspected were other cigarette burns, and who knew what else? Mom smoked, she said, narrowing her blue eyes. Darcy was a carbon copy of their mom. Blue eyes, blonde hair, sassy personality. 
Adam took after their dad with green eyes and dark hair. Mom died of lung cancer, in case you don't remember, Adam spit out. Sometimes Darcy brought out the worst in him. Yeah, like I don't remember how Mom died. Her voice was shrill. So why do you keep smoking? He shot back. You don't understand, Darcy said. I'm going through hell right now. It was time for Adam to back down. He moved past her and was surprised she didn't try to trip him in the doorway. Even though Adam was 27 and Darcy was almost 30, they resorted to acting like elementary school kids when they were around each other too long. I've got to get back to the shop, he said in a very controlled voice. Dad usually comes home by three or four. Okay, Darcy said in a grudging tone. Is there any food in the fridge? She called out before he reached the front door. I don't live here anymore, he said. You'll have to check. Before Darcy could say anything else, he hurried outside, pulling the door shut behind him. He wanted to slam his fist into something hard. Maybe the pain would feel better than the pain that being around Darcy caused. Adam jumped in his small truck and drove back to the bookstore. His stomach grumbled, but he didn't want to take the time to stop and grab something to eat. His dad had covered for him with the interview, and he needed to get updated on that. Also, it was hard to enjoy food when his stomach was in knots over his exchange with his sister. He hated that she smoked so blatantly around him, as if she were purposely trying to piss him off, as if she were mocking the anguish the entire family went through with their mom's cancer. His mom had been a smoker for as long as he could remember, and four years ago, she'd received the fatal diagnosis of lung cancer. Darcy was in between marriages one and two, and she was an emotional basket case, which pretty much meant she wasn't going to step in to help dad care for mom. Adam took his last semester of college classes online so that he could work full-time in the bookstore and allow his dad more time with his mom. To save money and help with hospital bills, Adam considered moving back home, but with Darcy in the house at the same time, it was like ice and fire trying to coexist. Instead, Adam converted the storage room at the bookstore into a makeshift bedroom. He'd been there ever since. It wasn't much to show off to any of his friends or any woman he might happen to date, but he spent most of the day with his dad, so it was nice to have some space to himself after the shop closed for the night. And now, with Darcy moving back home, he was glad he wouldn't have to share living space with her. Adam turned at the final traffic light before the bookstore, then pulled around the back of the shop. There was a small parking lot on the side of the store, but he always parked in the back so the customers would have more room. He jumped out of the truck, glad that his temper had simmered down. He didn't want it to carry over to the customers. Not that there would be a lot on a Monday afternoon. When he came in through the back door, he didn't see his dad. Adam opened the door to his bedroom storage room, but his dad wasn't there. Dad? Adam called as he walked around the closest bookcase. Oh, a woman said, flinching, then dropping a stack of books she carried. Instinctively, Adam moved forward to try to catch the books. He caught one, but the others tumbled to the floor. Oh, no. The woman knelt and stacked the books into a pile. I, I can't believe I did this again. Again? He asked. She looked up, and Adam finally got a good look at her. The woman's brown eyes were bright, intelligent, but she looked distressed. Her dark blonde hair looked as if she'd come through a windstorm, unless it was one of those messy buns he'd heard about. She was about his age, he guessed, and quite pretty, if he was going to be honest. Why are you getting so many books? He asked. Book club? Uh, no. She sat back on her heels. I work here. I'm just rearranging a few things. If there's something you need to find, I'm afraid that I'm new. Wait. Adam held up a hand. You work here? Her voice was a little defiant when she said, yes. Then her gaze shifted as she scanned him. Are you Adam Parks? He nodded as it dawned on him who this woman was, this new employee. Lucy Morley? Her brows shot up. Yep. My father hired you already. Her eyes filled with panic. I mean, it's okay, he rushed to say. I'm surprised, that's all. This was not going well. He rubbed the side of his face. I thought he'd wait to talk to me first. Never mind. I was pretty surprised myself, Lucy said in a quiet voice. I hope I can meet your expectations, Mr. Parks. Adam is fine. He extended his hand. Nice to meet you. She shook his hand tentatively. Her hand was warm. 
soft. Warm. Soft. He blinked. What can I help you with? Her smile emerged then, and she had dimples. I think I should be asking you that question. He shrugged. Whatever you're doing, I'm sure my dad will be thrilled with any help. Where is he, by the way? He went to get coffee. Lucy reached to push some of her wild strands away from her face. Adam sighed. I think my dad likes a woman who works at the coffee shop down the street. Her brows lifted. Are your parents not? My dad's a widower. He stood with one of the piles of books and set it on top of the closest bookcase. In the last few weeks, he's gone to get coffee three times a day. How long has he been widowed? Lucy stood as well, holding the rest of the books. He hadn't expected this question. Four years. Uh, my mom had lung cancer. I'm really sorry, Lucy said. Adam appreciated the sincerity. This woman was easy to talk to, and he'd barely met her. I'm sorry, too. I'm glad my dad is showing interest in another woman, although it's strange. I get it, she said. I mean, I haven't been in your situation. My parents are still alive and married. But I read a book about a woman whose dad remarried when he was 82, and it really opened my eyes to different family dynamics. Adam couldn't help but smile. Her eyes had lit up when she talked about reading a book. Do you like to read? Her cheeks dimpled. I love to read. Sometimes more than anything else. She tilted her head. When I saw the ad for a position here, I jumped at the chance. I'm glad you did. He didn't know exactly where that came from. They did need help, but there were other applicants coming to be interviewed, which reminded him that he needed to email them all back and cancel their interviews. Lucy's cheeks flushed. She really was pretty, Adam decided, and he suddenly wondered if she had a boyfriend or was married. A quick glance at her hand didn't reveal a wedding ring. I'll finish moving these books, Lucy was saying, her cheeks still pink. I think I'll carry fewer books at a time, though. I'll try not to suddenly appear at the end of an aisle and call out for my dad. That would be great, Lucy said with a small laugh. She moved past him, and because the aisle wasn't technically spaced for two people, her arm brushed against his. Vanilla, Adam decided. She smelled like vanilla. Three. Lucy bit her lip as she heard the voices in the next room, well, the storage room that she caught a glimpse of. She wasn't sure why there was a bed in there, too. It wasn't her place to be nosy, though. Mr. Parks had returned from the coffee shop, all smiles, and Adam had immediately said he wanted to talk. Lucy was left to man the store again, while father and son talked about her behind the closed door. From what Lucy could discern, Adam didn't sound upset, so that seemed to be a good thing, but their conversation was definitely vigorous. She was tempted to move closer to the door so she could decipher all of the words, but she refrained. It would be embarrassing to be caught eavesdropping. So, with a thumping pulse, she worked on cleaning up one of the front displays. She decided that less was more, and she removed all of the books except three. She chose the newest Simon Wood thriller to go along with the new Susanna Kearsley mystery. Then she added Jamie Ford's latest historical. She wished the man would write more than one book every few years. But then again, his research probably took a while. She adjusted the Simon Wood book, one she hadn't read yet. She had once listened to the author's audible version of The One That Got Away when she drove to Santa Rosa to visit her sister. It had been a big mistake to listen to a serial killer book about a man who preyed on women in small towns. Or perhaps it was a testament to Wood's skilled writing. Regardless, she avoided all restaurants in small towns on the way home. The storage room door opened, and Lucy tried not to glance over as the men came out. Apparently, their conversation was over. Lucy wondered if she still had a job, but when Mr. Parks approached her with a smile, she knew she did. Adam is contacting the other applicants right now to let them know the job is filled, Mr. Parks said. And I agree that having some part-time help will be good for the store. Great, Lucy said. I'm happy to be here then. Mr. Parks rubbed his hands together. How about I show you around? All right, Lucy said. Before Mr. Parks went on his coffee break, he'd shown her the basics of the cash register, which Lucy picked up on due to her previous job experience. 
Adam was at the register, typing on a laptop that she hadn't seen there before. Maybe it had been under the counter or in the storage room. He was probably emailing the other job applicants that the job had been filled. Lucy looked quickly away. His dark hair, square jawline, and green eyes reminded her of one of those gothic heroes from a 1940s romance novel. Adam was far from brooding, although he seemed to be what she'd call a methodical thinker. She followed Mr. Parks to the front door and large front window. When you leave in the evenings, he said, Adam will be here most of the time to lock up, but there might be times that you'll need to do it. We're a bit old-fashioned, so we still use a flip sign, but it's one of our shop's appeals. At least that's what I keep telling my son when he makes comments. I can hear you, Adam said in a dry tone from across the shop. Mr. Parks ignored his son. We flipped this sign over to read closed. He demonstrated with a red and white sign that was perched in the windowsill. Got it, Lucy said. Mr. Parks moved to the door. We have double locks, of course. Not one of those fancy security systems. Thieves nowadays are more interested in electronics. And cash and gift cards, Adam said from the counter. Mr. Parks lifted his brows, but kept his focus on Lucy. We do bank deposits twice a day. At least we used to until the advent of the, uh, the debit card, Adam supplied for him. Lucy glanced at Adam to see him smiling. He had abandoned his frantic typing for a moment. She gave a small laugh. I think everyone's lives were changed. No one carries around cash anymore, it seems. Mr. Park shook his head. It's a different world, I won't argue that. But the nice thing about debit cards is the security of our accounting system, although my son tells me there are a whole host of other security issues like identity theft going on now. Advancements bring different challenges, I guess, Lucy said. You're so very right. Mr. Parks motioned her over to the reading nook. My wife set this up a number of years ago, but Adam thinks it needs to be updated. We've seen a lag in customers this past year with everyone buying those e-reader contraptions. I don't know the last time someone used a reading corner. What do you think we can do to make it better? Lucy stilled. She could feel Adam's curious gaze on her, and Mr. Parks folded his arms as if he were ready to take her opinion seriously. She studied the nook. Two armchairs were pushed together. Their peach and white print faded, but they were still in good condition. A small rocking chair was on the other side and was likely meant for a kid. Next to it was a pair of gaudy yellow plastic chairs that had seen better days. Two small shelves of books completed the nook, and it looked like most of them were children's books. A couple of fake plants had been thrown into the mix. Lucy thought about the other bookstores she'd been in. They were larger bookstores, so they had children's sections complete with miniature couches and brightly colored rugs. Some of them even had coffee and espresso bars for their adult readers. Um, Lucy glanced over at Adam. He gave her a small nod, but didn't say a word. Is this supposed to be for children or adults? Both, Mr. Park said right away. I think you need to focus on one or the other. Lucy rested her hands on her hips. Do parents bring their kids in a lot? Not like they used to, Mr. Park said. Now the kids all have those iPads and other gadgets. True, Lucy said. But every kid likes story time. That's a great idea, Mr. Park said. I just don't know how to go about it. I think Lucy is volunteering, Adam said. She looked over at him. I could do it, if you're interested. Adam stood from the desk and walked over to them. I think it's a great idea. He stood only a couple of feet from Lucy, but she felt his presence as if he were standing closer. There was something magnetic about him that she couldn't define. Maybe it was her imagination, as a result of reading one too many books. What do you need to get started? Mr. Parks asked. Lucy exhaled and looked from father to son. You're really okay with my idea? Both said yes at the same time. Lucy gave a nervous laugh. Okay, I'll look online for some decorating ideas. I think we could put in a few small wooden chairs painted in bright colors. A rug that the younger kids can sit on, maybe even a couple of small beanbags? Both men were still listening intently, so she continued. There are garage sales every weekend this time of year, and I can search for stuff at them, so it won't cost a ton of money. My sister's soon-to-be ex-husband works at a furniture store, 
Adam said. I'll talk to him. Won't that be awkward? Lucy asked. Greg is always about the next deal. Adam said in an ironic tone. Money trumps family relations. His comment seemed to carry a deeper weight, but now wasn't the time to ask personal questions. Apparently, Adam had a sister going through a divorce. I could put up flyers, Mr. Park said, and Adam could post about it on our blog thingamajig. Website, Dad, Adam said. Mom created a blog, but I converted everything into a website. It's easier to navigate. Right, Mr. Park said. He looked at Lucy. When should we start? Lucy thought quickly. Um, two weeks? That's quick, Adam said. She felt a blush grow. She didn't know why she was blushing. I have some extra time. This is my only job right now. Besides, we'd probably have better luck getting this established during the summer months. Moms are always looking for something to do with their kids during the summer. Adam raised a brow, but Lucy wasn't about to fill these men in on her stint as a nanny last year when she cared for a three-year-old and six-year-old. She'd loved the kids, but when the husband started coming home earlier and earlier before his wife did to hang out with Lucy and the kids, she grew uncomfortable. Sounds good to me. Mr. Parks looked at his son for confirmation. Two weeks it is, then, Adam said. Should we give it an official name? Story time at Parks, Mr. Parks offered. How about story time with Lucy, Adam said, his green eyes settling on Lucy. Her skin grew hot again. She really needed to stop blushing. I'm not so sure. I mean, what if you fire me one day and then the new person is named Debbie or something? Who's Debbie? Mr. Parks asked, clearly confused. Adam laughed. I think story time with Lucy is fine. And he winked. Lucy's heart thumped. He turned from her as if he hadn't just altered her world. Then he walked back to the desk. I'll post it on the website right now. What day and time should we put? Lucy exhaled. Uh, Saturdays? Morning? Not too early, but not too late, in case the kids have sports or dance or something. Good thinking. Adam clicked away on the laptop. Let's say 10 a.m. on Saturdays? What if we offer free coffee for the adults, Mr. Park said. Adam nodded his agreement while he continued working on the laptop. And what about the parents, Mr. Parks asked. Where will they sit? They won't, Lucy said. The parents will wander the shop while their kids are being entertained. It will give the parents a chance to browse, which will in turn lead to some sales. Brilliant, Adam said without looking up. It turned out that Lucy could blush without Adam even looking at her. Four. I think Lucy has been our best hire, Adam's dad told him the morning of the first story time event. She's been our only hire, Adam said. Exactly. His dad chuckled and crossed to the front door of the shop where he flipped the sign to open. They were hoping that a group of parents would show up in an hour, bringing their kids along and making the morning a success. Lucy usually worked afternoons, but on Saturdays she would now come in early for the story hour. With the help of Lucy, Adam and his dad had spent the last two weeks making changes in the store to accommodate the new story time area. Lucy had painted the chairs Adam had picked up from Greg's furniture shop. She'd also found a multicolored rug on clearance at a local store. Adam had to admit that the written nook looked great. Adam's job today was to keep the coffee maker going. His dad would be helping customers, and Lucy would be running story time. Adam turned on the coffee maker and set out cups and napkins on a table they'd cleared off. He was a bit nervous about this idea, but both his dad and Lucy assured him that they didn't expect large cups of coffee to be dashed on the floor or dropped onto a brand new hardcover book. The back door opened, and Adam turned expectantly to see Lucy. She looked like Alice in Wonderland. Lucy smiled as Adam gaped at her. Then she did a slow spin, making the pale blue dress and its white apron flare out above her knees. What do you think? Uh, Adam tried to collect his thoughts. He'd never seen Lucy in anything other than jeans, a regular shirt, and some sort of ponytail or bun. Her dark blonde hair was curled into waves that reached her shoulders, and her makeup accented the shape of her lips and made her eyes look bigger than usual. 
Her dress might be a costume from a children's story, but it did nothing to hide her curves and the way her waist tapered before the full skirt took over. He quickly looked back to her face. You're Alice. She laughed, a laugh he was well familiar with by now. I am. I thought the kids would be more captivated if Alice told them stories. I don't doubt you'll have their full attention, Adam said. If he were a little boy, he wouldn't be able to take his eyes from her. What a wonderful idea, his father said, emerging from the front of the shop. Alice in Wonderland, the kids will be enchanted. Adam couldn't agree more, but he really should get back to his job. Something with coffee? Thanks, Lucy said. I'll set up for the story time. While Lucy moved chairs around and picked out books that Adam knew she'd already decided on, he kept stealing glances at her. They'd been working together for two weeks now, and having her around had made a big difference to the organization of the shop. His father was also less stressed because Lucy took care of so many small things that had been taking up his energy, leaving more time for his dad to chat with customers. It was clear that his father liked having Lucy around. Adam admitted he liked having her around, too but he felt like he barely knew her. She never talked about her family or personal life. She'd talk anyone's ear off about a book she'd read, but that was as far as her conversations went. Adam needed to stop watching her and get back to work. He returned to his laptop and did a quick search on the website to check the Google Analytics for the page views over the past couple of days. They were up from the week before, and Adam hoped that meant that word was getting out. He'd emailed a reminder through their newsletter last night, even though he hated to send out two newsletters in the same month. The front door of the shop opened, and a woman came in with two children. His dad greeted her. Is this where the story time is? She asked, glancing at her phone. Yes, this way. His father motioned toward the reading corner. The woman nodded, then said, I'll be back in an hour. Adam left his spot behind the desk and walked toward the woman when his dad said, I'm afraid that we aren't licensed for babysitting. All parents have to remain in the store while their children are here. You are welcome to have coffee while you wait. Bravo, Dad. Adam slowed his step as Lucy approached. Lucy bent down, her hands on her knees, as she looked the two kids in the eye. Are you here for story time? Both of them nodded emphatically. Great. Is that okay with your mom? Lucy asked. The kids looked up at their mom. Can we stay? The woman looked from the kids to Adam's dad. Then to Lucy. All right, I guess I can do my errand later. Lucy smiled. Come with me, then. Your mom can join us or look at other books while she waits. The woman still had a grudging expression on her face while Lucy led the kids to the reading corner, but Adam's dad wasn't deterred and offered her a cup of coffee. Adam almost sighed with relief when she took it. He hadn't expected this sort of complication. He looked over as the front door opened again. A couple with a young boy came in. Adam's dad was quick to greet them in his usual friendly manner, and just like that, story time was becoming an instant success. Lucy spent the time leading up to 10 a.m. showing the kids the different books she was going to read and telling them why she liked those particular authors. Even though some of what she said must have gone over their heads, they watched her with fascination. She'd made a good call on the Alice dress, although Adam said she'd be as successful in regular clothes. By the time Lucy officially started, there were 14 kids in the reading corner. As she read them book after book, the parents browsed, visited, and drank coffee. Adam wished he could sit in one of the kids' chairs and listen to the tales along with the children, but he dutifully worked the register as some of the parents bought books. Adam kept an eye on his dad in between customers. He was beaming and enjoying the interaction. The store hadn't been this busy since last year's Christmas season, and it was now the end of July. Adam wanted to laugh when several of the kids asked to take a picture with Lucy, or rather with Alice. A small line formed at the register, and Adam cheerfully rang up the purchases. When the crowd had dwindled to one lingering family, Adam looked over to see Lucy cleaning up the reading corner. He walked over and helped straighten a couple of chairs. This was an amazing idea, he told her. The kids loved it, and we even sold a few books. Lucy turned to him with a smile. I think you sold more than a few. Okay, so maybe a few dozen, but who's counting? She laughed, and Adam decided he loved her laugh. Do you think I could change my clothes in the back room? She said, I don't want to wear this the rest of the day, and your dad asked me to stay longer. 
Adam toyed with the idea of asking her to stay in the costume for him, but that might border on flirting, and he was already pushing the envelope in that area. Sure, Adam said. I'll straighten the back room up a little. Lucy frowned. Don't worry about that. I, I mean, it's a storage room. It's my bedroom, too. At her surprised expression, he continued. Money was tight for a while with my mom's medical bills, and with my sister moving in and out of my dad's house on a regular basis, I decided to set up here. Oh, that makes sense. It does, he said. I mean, some women or some people think it's bizarre. I wouldn't say bizarre, exactly, Lucy said in a thoughtful tone, her brown eyes studying him. Maybe more adventurous or even romantic. His mouth twitched. Romantic? You know, some people like those tiny houses, she said. They take pride in living in a very small space and enjoy a minimalist lifestyle. Adam rubbed the back of his neck. Yeah, that's not me. But she kept talking. I read an article a few months ago about cube units in China. It's incredible how things can be condensed and simplified. Reminded me of the boxcar children, if you know what I mean. Vaguely. Do you go stir crazy, though? Both living and working here? It's not ideal, but it works okay for now, he said. What about you? Are you in an apartment or something? She took a step back. Yeah, not too far from here, but I wouldn't mind living in a bookstore. Her face reddened. I mean, my old roommate complained that I have too many books anyway. I'll grab my clothes. I left them by the back door. Adam stared after her. She really didn't like talking about herself, except for the things she'd read. He wondered what her story was. His dad was still talking to the last family from story time, so Adam went to the storage room. He always made the bed, and the room was fairly organized for having a bed, a bedside table, a rack where he hung his clothing, a small dresser, and one wall lined with shelves that contained boxes of books to be unpacked and stocked or shipped back to publishers as remainders. He stepped out of the room as Lucy came around the corner. It's all yours, he said. Thanks. She moved past him and shut the door. He stood there for a moment while the scent of vanilla lingered in her wake. Then he walked back to the cash register as the back door of the store opened. Where have you been? His sister asked, coming toward him. She was the last person he'd expected to see. We've been here at the store, Adam said. Darcy, their dad said. I've been calling both of you. Darcy put her hands on her hips. She wore a short, fitted dress and high heels, which usually meant that she was going someplace where men would be. I couldn't get my car started. Adam pulled out his cell phone. There was one missed call and a text. He must not have heard the alerts. Sorry, he said. Did you try the store phone? I don't know the number, Darcy puffed out. How did you get here? The car finally started. Darcy looked around the store as if she were on some sort of important treasure hunt. Are these the chairs you bought from Greg? Adam sighed. He could guess where this was going, and he was glad all the customers were gone. Yes. Darcy whirled on him, her painted nail pointed at his chest. Greg bragged to me about how he was still hanging out with my family, which somehow proves that the divorce is my fault. He said that you guys are best friends. Adam raised his hands. We all know that Greg exaggerates everything. Yes, I bought the chairs at his store. He wasn't even the sales clerk who helped me. I think you know him enough to realize he's trying to get a rise out of you. Darcy narrowed her eyes, then looked at their dad. Why would you let Adam buy furniture from Greg? He's trying to get out of paying me alimony, and now you guys are giving him more money? Don't blame dad for anything. Adam stepped forward. It was my decision to get the chairs from Greg. He pointed to the reading nook. We spent less than $100, which means that Greg probably got 20 bucks out of the deal total. Darcy scoffed. Half the furniture in the house came from Greg's store. That's a lot more than 20 bucks, and one couch and one dresser came from Greg's store. Adam cut in, and Dad bought them when Greg was his son-in-law. Hold up, their dad said in a sharp voice. Darcy, we won't buy anything else from Greg, all right? And Adam, we probably should have given your sister a heads up. Adam clenched his jaw. Fair enough. His sister rolled her eyes. It's so easy for you, isn't it? being mom and dad's favorite, doing everything right. Hell, the business is even in your name now. It was all that Adam could do to keep his voice steady when he replied. You never wanted anything to do with the business. When dad offered it to us 50-50, you said you wanted the payout instead. 
The fact that you blew through the money in less than a year is not my problem. Darcy's face reddened, and Adam was bracing himself for what she might throw at him when the storage room door opened. He felt like his stomach had been hollowed out. He'd totally forgotten about Lucy being on the other side of that door. Five. There was only so long Lucy could hide out in Adam's makeshift bedroom while listening to the argument taking place on the other side of the door. As the conversation progressed, Lucy guessed the woman was Adam's sister. She remembered Adam saying that his sister's ex owned the furniture store where he bought the chairs. Lucy didn't know if it was worse to keep eavesdropping or to interrupt. But Mr. Parks was mostly silent, and what if another customer came into the store? Wouldn't a family feud be bad for business? So Lucy squared her shoulders and opened the door. She immediately saw the woman in question, a blonde woman who looked furious and who might have been pretty in kind of an angular way when she wasn't yelling at her brother. Adam wasn't being a reticent brother either, although he was the one with more control over his temper. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, Lucy said, feeling extremely awkward. I'll finish cleaning up. She moved around to Adam since she didn't want to pass by the irate sister. Who the hell are you? Darcy shot out. Lucy practically froze mid-stride. Darcy, that's uncalled for, Adam was quick to say. Lucy is our part-time employee, Mr. Parks added. She's been working here for a few weeks. This morning was our first story time, and all the kids loved her. Really? Why was she in your bedroom then? Lucy met Darcy's gaze. I was changing my clothes. I thought it would be fun to dress up for story time. She looked at Mr. Parks. My boss approved. She looked back at Darcy. Do I need your approval too? Darcy scoffed. No, but I didn't know someone else worked here. I guess the store's bringing in some good money, huh? I think we should have this conversation at home, Mr. Parks told his daughter. I didn't realize you had so many unresolved feelings about the business of the store. I don't, Darcy argued. But I don't like walking in here and finding some strange woman in my brother's bedroom, which happens to be store property. Lucy had had enough. Maybe it was because Darcy wasn't her sister that Lucy had the courage to speak up. I work here, Lucy said. Your dad interviewed me and your brother hired me. I think you need to respect the fact that they can make those types of decisions. I was in your brother's bedroom because he lives in a storage room since he put his heart and soul into keeping the business afloat while helping with your mom's medical bills. Darcy stared at her, apparently speechless. Lucy wasn't finished. If you want to be respected for your choices, you need to respect them for their choices. You're an adult woman living at your dad's house. You should be more grateful. No one moved. No one spoke. Lucy fully expected to get fired on the spot. Darcy's mouth had opened in astonishment. Lucy was sort of astonished herself. Then Darcy's face changed into what some might call a smile. I like her. She looked at Adam. You finally found a woman with guts. And just then, the front door opened, and a group of teenagers came in, laughing about something one of them had put on Snapchat. Lucy took it as her cue to be excused from the family conversation. She didn't know if she'd made things better or much, much worse. Her hands shook as she began to gather the dirty coffee cups, grateful that she didn't have a sister like Darcy. Her sister, Sydney, might be hard to live up to, but Darcy was in another universe entirely. Lucy could totally understand why Adam was so irritated with her. Can I help you guys find something? She asked the teenagers, hoping that her voice sounded normal. A couple of them looked up. Sam needs a book for class, one girl said, pointing at one of the boys. The kid named Sam gave a little smile. Great, what's the name of the book? Lucy asked. I don't know, Sam said. His friends moved to a rack of magazines. It has to be a memoir. Okay. Lucy said, I can help you with that. What kinds of books do you usually like to read? Sam followed her to the memoir section, and as she suggested a few titles for him to consider, she noticed that Darcy had left the store. She didn't see Adam anywhere either. Had he gone with her? Mr. Parks was at the register, keeping a close eye on the other teenagers. Once Sam had picked out his book and paid for it, the group left, laughing and shoving at each other. Lucy moved through the bookcases, straightening as she went, dreading the conversation she'd have to have with Mr. Parks and Adam. Mr. Parks joined her in one of the aisles. I need to apologize for what happened with Darcy earlier, he said. No, I'm sorry. 
Lucy said. I overstepped my bounds. I shouldn't have said what I did. Mr. Parks chuckled. She needed to hear it from someone other than her brother. Lucy exhaled. I understand things with families get sticky sometimes, but it's not my business. In Darcy's case, it's what she needed to hear, Mr. Parks said. Ever since my wife's death, she and Adam have been like oil and water. Lucy nodded. She didn't really want Mr. Parks to tell her anything too personal. I get it. I have a sister and a brother. And I'm sure things are more complicated when there's a family business to consider. Mr. Parks nodded and was quiet for a moment. Lucy was curious about where Adam had gone. Maybe he was upset with her? Or maybe he was finished working for the day. With story time over, they didn't need three people in the store. Look, Mr. Parks said, I have some plans this afternoon. So can you cover the store until Adam gets back? He'll only be gone a couple of hours. Sure thing. Then Mr. Parks flashed her a smile. I'm going on a date, but don't tell my kids. Oh, wow. She returned his smile, feeling somewhat normal again. The woman at the coffee shop? Mr. Parks chuckled as he moved away. I guess I'm not as secretive as I thought. Have a nice time, Lucy called after him. Moments later, she was alone in the store. She spent the next couple of hours working and helping the few customers who came in. Her mom and sister both texted her at one point, asking her to meet them for lunch the next day. Her sister was in town for the weekend, and truthfully, Lucy was sort of avoiding Sydney. Lucy didn't want to explain why she'd had to change jobs and that she hadn't been able to find another roommate yet. That might mean that she'd have to find a second job or change to a full-time job to pay rent. It seemed Lucy was always scraping by. Sydney and her mom would tell her to go back to college, take out some student loans, and take on more responsibility. Lucy sighed. She'd heard it all before. But she hated the idea of sitting in more classrooms day after day, listening to dreary teachers talking about stuff that didn't interest her. With no one in the store, she sat in the reader's corner and leafed through a couple of the picture books she'd read to the children earlier that morning. But what if she'd spent $50 on the Alice in Wonderland dress? The kids had loved it, and she could wear it week after week. She toyed with the idea of wearing a different costume each week, but that would get expensive. Maybe it would be worth it to keep surprising Adam. She hadn't missed the appreciative look in his eyes when he'd seen her dress. For a moment, she let herself believe that he was attracted to her, that he secretly wanted to ask her out. She smiled at her fantasy, then nearly jumped when the back door opened. Lucy scrambled to her feet as Adam came into the store. Hi, she said, nerves fluttering. He stopped. He stared at her for a second, then said, hey, I'm really sorry about Darcy. I should be the one apologizing, Lucy said. I feel awful. What you said was perfect, he said. Darcy is Darcy, and she'll always be abrasive. But she crossed the line with you, and you didn't back down. She's used to people backing down and never contradicting her. I need to thank you for holding your ground. You're not going to fire me? No, he said with a chuckle. I'm glad you set her straight. I feel terrible she treated you like that. Lucy exhaled. She really didn't want Adam to feel bad about his sister's actions. If anything, she felt sorry for him. I know that families can be complicated. He blinked his green eyes. Do you have a sister? I have an older sister and a younger brother. This was the first she'd told him of her family. This was the first time they'd stopped working and just talked. He took a couple of steps closer and leaned against one of the book stands. So you're the middle child. Lucy smiled. Butterflies in her stomach didn't accurately describe how she felt when he seemed completely focused on her. Yep. Neglected and aimless. Adam's brows shot up. I wouldn't know about the neglected part, but you're definitely not aimless. She shrugged, but apparently Adam wasn't going to drop the subject. Tell me how you're aimless, he said. With the way he was watching her, she wished she was anything but aimless. She wished she was the kind of woman who could impress him. She leaned against the armchair that she'd sat in during story time. No offense, but... I'm working part-time in a bookstore at the age of 24. You're 24? Why did he sound surprised? Yeah, I know. 
aimless. No, I thought you were younger, but 24 is good. Because? I'm 27. He flashed one of his smiles that always made Lucy want to smile back. And you own the bookstore, Lucy said. Big difference. He slid his hands into the pockets of his pants. Maybe not as big a difference as you think. I mean, my dad started this store, not me. He did all the hard work, and I happened to be born his son. And you just happened to be good at running a bookstore business, and you happened to agree to take it over when your sister doesn't want anything to do with it? She felt her face warming. You have a life, Adam. I don't, but that's okay. I'm not complaining. I live in a storage room, Adam said. I haven't hung out with friends in months. I haven't taken a girl on a date in longer than that. Why not? Lucy asked. It appeared that she was not afraid to ask him almost any question a person could come up with. Adam chuckled. You're pretty direct, aren't you? It's my favorite type of character. Of course it is, he said with a raised brow. Are you making fun of me? Lucy held back a smile. Never. Adam shook his head. I like your directness. And I like how you work the topic of books or characters into every conversation. Lucy laughed. My sister hates it. Is she as crazy as my sister? I think Sydney is about as opposite of your sister as anyone could be, she said. Take Mary Poppins, put her in the modern world, and that's my sister. She's a nanny? No, Lucy said with another laugh. She's a VP of a software firm in Santa Rosa. She was the kind of girl in high school who was a cheerleader, spearheaded charities, and included her little sister in everything. It was aggravating. Adam's eyes filled with amusement. Honestly, she sounds like a great sister. I know, right? She said, I hate it. Adam laughed. How can someone even complain about my sister? That proves how aimless my life is, Lucy said. Even when I really try, I come up short. You should stop comparing yourself to your sister then, he said. Compare yourself to my sister and you'll come out on top. She's going through a third divorce. And she's a chain smoker, despite the fact that her mom died of lung cancer. Lucy didn't know if she should sympathize or smirk at the irony. I think I'd smoke too, or maybe drink, if I was on my third divorce. Adam seemed to consider this. Yeah, you're probably right. Although she's been smoking since she was a teenager. Not that my mom was a great example to her. Their conversation had gone from lighthearted to serious, and Lucy didn't know how she felt about that. But your sister should know better now, right? She prompted, especially seeing what your mom went through. That's exactly my point, Adam sighed. It's addicting, you know. For better or for worse, she was feeling more and more comfortable around Adam. I never smoked, but some of my friends do. They say it helps with anxiety and general stress. Yeah, he said in a quiet voice. But why couldn't she do yoga or something? That's the story of my life, Lucy admitted. Adam scanned her face. What do you mean? Are you a yoga instructor or something? No, my mom, my sister, and sometimes my dad start a lot of sentences when talking to me with, why couldn't you? Ah, uh, I see. He held out his hand. I want to show you something. Lucy looked at his hand. Did he want her to hold his hand? She placed her hand in his, and he smiled. Then he led her to the front of the store to one of the displays. He dropped her hand, and she decided she wasn't going to make a big deal out of it. He was just showing her something. Do you ever read the author bios at the back of their books? He asked. Sometimes, she said. If I love a book, I'll do some research on the author. They were standing close to each other, and Lucy tried to ignore his clean scent. Which then made her wonder where he showered. Was there another bathroom in the shop she didn't know about? Would it be weird to ask him? I read most authors' bios. He picked up a book. This author was a veterinarian. James Rollins? She'd only read one of his books, but it had been a while. She took the book from Adam. He picked up a John Grisham book and turned to the bio section. This author used to sell books out of the trunk of his car. And he was a lawyer. That too. Adam moved around the display and picked up a republication of Pride and Prejudice. I'm assuming you like Jane Austen. Of course, she said. Most female writers in her day used male pseudonyms because writing fiction wasn't considered moral for women. Lucy laughed. 
It's true. I know. Lucy sighed. I get what you're trying to tell me. Working part-time in a bookstore isn't aimless. Adam set the book down and folded his arms. What about working full-time? Would that be aimless? No, Lucy said in a slow voice. That would be more of a career? Adam flashed her a smile. I was hoping you'd say that. She stared at him. When he didn't say anything more, she said, Why? He took the book she was holding and set it back on the display table. It's time for my dad to retire. He's almost 70 years old and has never taken more than two days off my entire life. If I told him I was hiring you as our new full-time assistant manager, I think he might agree to retire. He'd still come into the shop, I have no doubt, especially at the beginning. Lucy blinked. Can you afford it? I, I mean, not that it's my business. The success of Storytime gave me a lot of hope, Adam said, not acting offended at all. I have quite a few other ideas, but my father wouldn't like many of them. So, with him out of the way, you can do them? She teased. Something like that. Plus, I like your ideas. You're great with customers, you know a lot about books. Lucy laughed. Your Alice in Wonderland costume was a brilliant idea, he continued. My dad likes you, and, well, I think you're a great fit for the store. Should I go on? I'm feeling pretty good about myself now, Lucy said. I've never been one to turn down a few compliments. So, was that a yes? Don't you have to run this past your dad? She asked, her pulse speeding up. No, I'm the owner and manager. He seemed to be standing closer to her, but he hadn't moved. Somehow the space between them had shrunk. She took a deep breath, and as the shop phone rang, she said, Okay, I accept. Adam grinned. Perfect. I'm glad. And you can tell your sister that you're amazing. He moved past her before she could say anything else. She didn't move for a moment while she listened to him answer the phone. She wanted to hug herself, run around in circles. She had a full-time job with a title, assistant manager, no less. When Adam hung up the phone, she was still standing by the display. She had to tell him about her lack of education. You know I don't have a college degree, right? I only went two semesters. No problem. Adam looked over at her. I can train you. She grinned. I'm so happy I could hug you. He laughed. Don't worry, I won't. She held up a hand. It's probably against some protocol anyway. Before Adam could answer, the front door opened behind her. Lucy turned. A young couple entered, holding hands. Lucy greeted them, wondering if she should introduce herself as the assistant manager, but she refrained. Maybe she'd wait until she got a name tag. Six. Adam wondered if he'd been too impulsive about hiring Lucy full-time, but it wasn't impulsive if he'd been thinking about it from the day his dad had hired her, right? Adam had been paying attention to how she interacted with customers. She was never late. She stayed past her shift most days. If she ever made a mistake, she was quick to correct it and eager to learn new things. She was also great with the kids at story time, and that was what had solidified his decision. He hadn't planned on offering the position to her so quickly. Lucy was now telling the customers who'd recently come into the store about how John Grisham used to sell books out of the trunk of his car. Adam smiled to himself. Lucy made him laugh. He felt lighter when he was around her. His problems with his sisters seemed to fade away. And it was remarkable that Lucy had sympathized with Darcy. Who would have thought? Lucy was growing on him. He could admit that he'd been attracted to her ever since he met her, but he valued her as an employee and didn't want to mess up the good atmosphere of their working relationship by doing something as dumb as asking her out. Although he wanted to, very much. She might have a boyfriend, but he sort of doubted it. Didn't most women who were in relationships talk about their boyfriends? Maybe not to their bosses, but surely she would have said something. Yet... He'd been working with her for weeks, and she'd only told him today that she had two siblings. The phone rang again, pulling Adam from his thoughts. He answered it and was pleased to talk to the woman who was calling with questions about story time. Only on Saturday mornings, she said. Oh, that's too bad. My son is in Taekwondo every Saturday morning. 
If you ever do a weekday evening, I'd love to know about it. Sure, Adam said. Can I get your contact information? And if we start one up, I'll let you know. When he hung up, more marketing ideas were plaguing him. He'd wanted to sell e-readers in the store. He couldn't make the markup high because then customers would buy them online. But he could offer gift wrapping and maybe an additional discount on other things in the store if they bought an e-reader. He also wouldn't mind expanding the coffee bar idea that they'd done with Storytime. The young couple approached the register carrying Variant by Robison Wells. Great book, Adam said. You've read it too? The young woman asked. Lucy told us it's great. Adam's gaze connected with Lucy's from where she was standing across the store. She smiled at him, then turned away. Adam's heart did a little jump. It's great to come to a store where the employees actually read, the young woman said with a laugh. Adam smiled. My dad started this business years ago, and he always insisted that I read at least two books a month. Sounds like a great dad, the woman said, her tone a bit wistful. After the couple had left, Adam opened his laptop and pulled up his marketing ideas document. Hey, Lucy, can you come here? She was at his side quickly. He wanted to ask her if she always smelled like vanilla, but he didn't. Are you going to quiz me in author bios again? She asked. He turned the laptop so that she could see his marketing list. One of the customers who called earlier asked if we'd ever consider doing a weekday evening story time. Lucy raised her brows. That might be good during the school year. I added the idea to my list, he said. Do you think you can look at my other ideas and see what you think? She leaned down and propped her elbows on the counter while she read through his list. Some of this sounds great, she said after a moment. Other ideas uh, might be too much work for too little reward. He moved so that he could see the screen better. Mm, like what? Don't sell baked goods in the shop. That's what my dad says. But wrapped candy and chocolate is a great idea, Lucy said. No mess and yummy. Okay. Adam leaned in to click the document. He typed wrapped candy and chocolate, then put an asterisk next to it. Lucy pointed at the screen. Definitely yes on this one. Background music in the store would be great. I think so too, he said. My dad thinks it would be too distracting if people are trying to read. Lucy shrugged. The music can be low in volume. And the best benefit is that I won't have to listen to you hum all of the time. She nudged his shoulder. I don't hum. You do. All the time. He laughed. Okay, so I hum. There could be worse things. Their gazes connected. I don't mind the humming. Something in her eyes shifted, as if she were thinking of him in a new light. But what light? He straightened, putting space between them. Good to know. With music in the store, maybe my humming will at least be on key. Lucy smiled and looked back at the list on the computer. What if we do 20% off new releases instead of older titles? Get a jump start on the new release sales. Maybe open the store early on release day? Adam nodded. I like it. This time he bumped her shoulder. What was your major in college, marketing? Uh, no, she said. I didn't exactly settle on anything. I chose English, but then I changed to geography, followed by a hard shift to communications. And that was all before the first semester ended. Adam stared at her. I can see the connection between English and communications, but I'm not sure about geography. I didn't even know it was a major. Well, it's a major, and I was interested in working in a small underground office at a seismic center. He wanted to laugh, but he could see she was serious. Really? <laughs> I can't picture you being happy in a small underground office of any kind. It was a rough week, Lucy said. My boyfriend dumped me, and I wanted to go hide in a hole. Adam's mouth involuntarily twitched. It's not funny. Lucy held back her own smile. At least it wasn't at the time. Adam rubbed his face, trying not to laugh. He failed. She put her hands on her hips while she watched him. Sorry. He held up his hand as he got control over his laughing. I can understand the desire to go hide in a hole, but to change your major so you can literally do that? I know, she said with a sigh. I'm trying to get out from my impulsive decision making. I like your impulsiveness. He didn't know why he said it, but it was true. Her eyes widened and their gazes held. She stepped back and their gazes broke. So, what's your story, Adam Parks? 
Adam leaned against the counter. My story? I think you know most of it. I know about your family, but not about you, she said. Good point. Adam hesitated. I graduated high school like 80% of all Americans. Went to college, majored in business management from the beginning, I might add. Lucy shook her head, a smile on her face. My mom started chemo treatments my last year, so I ended up moving back here to save money and finished up my classwork mostly online. He shrugged. My sister continues to plague me, no matter how I try to see life from her point of view, and my dad. I want him to be happy again. I don't want my sister to keep breaking his heart. And I suppose it would be nice if he could be in a relationship with another woman again, and they could take care of each other in their old age. I hate to see him so lonely. Lucy moved closer. What about you, though? What do you want for yourself? Adam hadn't ever really had time to think about himself, separate from the demands on his family and the business. This is it. He spread his hands. Park's bookstore. So if a genie popped out of a bottle and granted you three wishes, owning a bookstore would be one of them, she asked. You know, I think it would be, he said. I've been working at the store as long as I can remember. It's a part of me. Lucy glanced around. It is a nice store, and I wouldn't complain about this sort of career. She nailed him again with her brown eyes. So what would your other two wishes be? We're back to the genie thing again, he asked. She smirked. All right. I suppose it would be like most men. Her brows shot up. Do I want to hear this? Adam laughed. Unlimited money and a great woman to share it with. That makes no sense. She put her hands on her hips. Adam noticed that she often put her hands on her hips. He sort of liked it, though. If you had unlimited money, you wouldn't have to work here. Ah, he said, holding up his hand. This would still be my career, but maybe I could add a rare book section. Travel the world, collect books, bring them back here. And my unlimited money would pay an employee to run the store in my absence. Lucy tilted her head. I like it. Such a simple statement from her made him feel warm all over. He should probably get a cold water bottle out of the mini fridge in his bedroom. Speaking of running the store, we need to work out your new schedule. I usually have mornings off when my dad comes in. I wondered about that, she cut in. Do you sleep in or something? <laughs> he said, not quite. I get up early, thank you very much, around six o'clock, if you must know. I go for a run and then I do errands and sometimes I meet up with friends for breakfast. That explains it. He furrowed his brows. Explains what? She shrugged. I was trying to figure out how you don't look like a couch potato when you hang out in a bookstore all day. Yep, he was warm. I guess that's a compliment, he prompted. Her gaze turned mischievous. What time should I be here in the morning? My dad gets here around eight, but with our new arrangement, you'll be opening the store. I can be here at eight, no problem, she said. And how late should I plan on staying? I'm usually back in the store by noon, and then you can still leave around four or five. My dad usually takes Monday off. Do you want to do that as well, or pick another day during the week? Well, if you're used to running the store alone on Mondays, I'll stay with your schedule. Okay, great. He said as the front door opened and a group of people came in. They were obvious tourists, but we're still customers. Thanks, boss. Lucy walked away to greet the new arrivals. Adam watched her for a moment. A dozen thoughts running through his mind before he turned back to his marketing list. Seven. Assistant manager, huh? Sydney said, an impressed look on her face. That's wonderful, honey, Lucy's mom added. Impressive, too, since you've only worked there a few weeks. Lucy smiled. Yep. She took a sip of her water. They were waiting for their lunch to be served, and her sister would head back to Santa Rosa after they ate. It works out perfectly, since it would be a pain to work two part-time jobs. Her mom's expression looked sympathetic, and Lucy brushed it off. She had disappointed her parents by not sticking with college. She continued to be in the proverbial poorhouse, insisting on living in her own apartment and working to support herself. She wasn't going to be one of those women living off her parents. I'm so happy for you. Sydney continued, smoothing back her already smooth gold blonde hair. 
Lucy knew her sister really was happy for her. Sydney's sincerity was another thing to add to her perfect list. Her sister wore a flirty red and white sundress. Her mother wore a linen pantsuit. Lucy felt dowdy in her ancient jeans and a well-washed v-neck shirt. Is your boss nice? Her mom asked. I sort of have two bosses, Lucy said. Mr. Parks is the original owner, but now his son owns the shop, although they both still work there. The son is trying to get his dad to retire. She shrugged. They're both nice men. How old is the son? Sydney asked. Oh, no. Lucy shouldn't have been surprised. Ever since Sydney got engaged to Ryan, it was like she'd turned into a matchmaker. Um, she stalled. 27, I think. Married? No. Now they were on to the 20 questions part. Lucy decided to preempt things. He's single, has one sister, is hardworking, is close to his family, and his mom died of cancer a few years ago. The bookstore is pretty much his life. He's funny, good-looking, runs, and no, I'm not gonna date him. Sydney laughed, but their mom looked confused. You're in love with your boss? Her mom asked. Lucy groaned and covered her face. Sydney laughed some more. No, mom, Lucy said. I'm a professional, all right? An assistant manager. Her mom cast Sydney a questioning look, and Sydney kept smiling. How's Ryan, and how are all the wedding plans going? Lucy asked Sydney, desperate to change the subject. Lucy expected a glowing report on how wonderful and amazing Ryan was and how the wedding was going to be fantastic with all the perfect little touches. Instead, Sydney's smile fell. Good, she said, although her voice was hesitant. We've both been so busy lately that we have to schedule time to see each other. This weekend has been a sore spot for Ryan because I'm here with you guys instead of with him. Lucy was speechless. This was the first wrinkle she'd ever heard of, or at least knew of, in her sister's amazing and perfect relationship with Ryan. Well, you'll get married soon, and then you can spend all of your nights together. Lucy, her mom said, as if she'd said something completely shocking. It's true, Lucy defended her comment. Plus, we're all adult women here, right? Sydney laughed, but the light was no longer in her eyes. We are all adult women here. I can't argue with that. I can't believe my little sister is an assistant manager. When do I get to come to the store? Anytime. Lucy rattled off the hours. A mischievous gleam sparked in Sydney's eyes. I'd love to meet your boss. Lucy knew that her sister was teasing, but the comment worried her. What if Sydney and Ryan weren't the perfect couple after all? What if they broke up? What if Sydney visited the bookstore and caught Adam's eye? What if... Lucy was suddenly feeling very protective of her job and her boss. Too bad you have to get back to Santa Rosa and Ryan today, Lucy said. Sydney lifted her brows. She had gotten the hint. The bookstore and all things about it were Lucy's territory. If their mom hadn't been there, Lucy might have been tempted to tell Sydney more about Adam, but the temptation had quickly faded when Lucy saw Sydney as possible competition. The waitress brought their food, and Lucy dug into her Chinese chicken salad. Her mom talked about a golf trip she and dad were planning. The conversation then turned to her little brother, who was getting ready to start his second year in his master's program. Lucy let the conversation between her sister and mom buzz around her as she ate. She wondered if Adam knew how much the full-time job meant to her. Not only did it provide a way to keep up on her rent until she found another roommate, but it gave her confidence as well as a purpose. For the first time since she realized she'd have to drop out of college, she felt like perhaps things would turn out fine after all. Because if she hadn't hit all those dead ends and made so many U-turns, she wouldn't be where she was today. When lunch ended, their mom paid. It was no use arguing with her, and they all walked outside together. In the parking lot, Lucy gave her sister a hug. I'm proud of you, sis, Sydney said, then drew back. And I can't wait to meet Adam someday. Lucy didn't miss the glint in her sister's eyes. Somehow, Sydney knew that Lucy had the tiniest of crushes on Adam something Lucy hadn't fully admitted to herself. It wasn't like anything would ever come of it anyway. Adam was her boss. And yes, he'd given her a great job, but amazing things didn't happen to Lucy. Not like they did for other people. Drive safely, Lucy said, purposely avoiding any more talk about Adam. Her mom's gaze was already too alert. Lucy walked to her car and climbed in. The bookstore was closed today, and she had tomorrow off, though she wished she didn't. 
After talking so much about Adam, she kind of wanted to see him again. Soon. With a sigh, she started her car. Two days sounded like a long time not to see Adam. She wondered what he did all day on Sundays. Did he hang out at the store? Did he do stuff with friends? Go to his dad's house? Maybe he golfed or did other things she didn't know about. Maybe he was on a date right this very moment. By the time Lucy arrived at her apartment, she dreamed up an entire life for Adam. A life that included a group of friends, several girls who were half in love with them, and a nightlife that would rival that of any Seattle socialite. She spent the next couple of hours organizing her books in her bookcases, then she created another ad on a renter's website. Only three people had called her all week about her previous ad. One was an older man, the other was a girl who sounded like she was stoned. The third wanted the first month free. She was back to the drawing board. At least she'd be making more money now, but a roommate would be a huge financial help. She'd never thought she'd be this age, with no boyfriend, no husband, no college degree. Life had a habit of changing its mind on her. As she shut down her laptop, she looked outside. It was getting cloudy. Looked like rain. She changed into her yoga pants and curled up on the couch to read an Adriana Tragiani novel. Moments later, her cell phone buzzed with a text, but she wasn't in a hurry to check it. She assumed it was her mom, fishing for more information. Lucy had no doubt that her mom and sister talked about her before Sydney drove back to Santa Rosa. Lucy continued to read, but was interrupted again by a second text on her phone. She sighed and reached for it. The text was from her mom. It was great to see you, sweetie. Can't wait to hear more about your job. Lucy texted back. Thanks for lunch. We'll talk soon. Then she noticed that the first text wasn't from her mom. She didn't recognize the number, but her heart skipped a beat as she read through the message. It was from Adam. Have you ever been to the food truck fest in Tacoma? Uh, today's the final night. Hey. Was this an invitation? A conversation starter? Was this a family thing he was inviting her to? With her pulse drumming, she wrote back, Is this Adam? Yeah, sorry, I should have made that clear. Lucy sat up more fully on the couch. I haven't been to the fest, but I've heard about it. There. Now let him do the clarifying. Do you want to go with Dad and me? Ah, there it was. His dad was coming. She'd be the third party. Her chest deflated, but all things considered, she might still have a good time. Or she could stay by herself in her apartment and read. Is it raining in Tacoma? A minute went by before he answered. Bring a jacket. Lucy laughed. Okay, should I meet you at the store? We'll pick you up. Does four o'clock work? What's your address? If he had her cell phone from her resume, he certainly had her address, but she played along and texted it to him. Then she realized it was almost three. She had less than an hour to get ready. She scrambled off the couch, and even though it was probably raining in Tacoma, she jumped in the shower. Apparently, she didn't care too much about her appearance when she was simply meeting her mom and sister for lunch, but Adam was another story. As she shampooed her hair, she told herself not to let her expectations get too high. Despite Sydney's implications that Lucy liked Adam, Lucy had to be realistic. Yes, they got along great. Yes, he'd given her a major promotion and pretty much saved her financially. And yes, they were flirty with each other. But she knew very little about Adam's dating past. Maybe he had a girlfriend he hadn't admitted to, or maybe he was interested in someone. Maybe he had some terrible habits that would be disastrous to a relationship, like never changing his socks. Even with all those possibilities, she cared about how she looked around him. Maybe it was because he saw her differently than her family did. With her family, it was practically her role to be aimless. With Adam, she was his assistant manager. After she'd gotten out of the shower and dried off, she stood in front of her pathetic closet, wishing she had the sense of style that her sister did, or even part of her sister's budget. Lucy did have a couple of sundresses, but they would be too bare if it was raining. She could always wear the Alice in Wonderland dress, Lucy laughed to herself. Anything but her standard jeans. Yet she really had no choice. Then she remembered the pale green capris she had in her dresser. She hadn't worn them in a long time, and she hoped they still fit. 
She pulled them out and tried them on. Surprisingly, they fit fine, so she took them off and ironed them. She also ironed a white blouse she rarely wore because it wrinkled so easily. Finally, she grabbed a jacket that she hoped she wouldn't need. It would only wrinkle the shirt, and the shirt would look horrible if she took the jacket off later. From her apartment window, Lucy had a good view of the parking lot, so she'd be able to see when Adam and his dad showed up. She was standing at the window when Adam's truck pulled into the parking lot. She was surprised they hadn't brought Mr. Parks's car, since it would probably be more roomy. Lucy stepped back from the window so she'd be out of sight in case Adam looked up when he climbed out of the truck. He looked up at the building, then down at his phone as if checking the address. As he entered the building, Lucy closed the window blinds, then waited for him to knock. Eight. When Lucy opened the door and smiled at Adam, he had the strangest urge to greet her with a hug. But she was his employee, and just because they'd had some heart-to-hearts didn't mean they were best friends. Besides, Adam didn't think friendship was why he wanted to hug her. Lucy was wearing a white blouse and fitted capris that looked great on her. Her hair was down, similar to the way she wore it for her Alice in Wonderland look, but without the headband. He couldn't decide which way he liked it better. She held a jacket in her hand, and some sort of purse or bag was slung over her shoulder. He shoved his hands in his pockets before he gave in to his impulse to hug her. Found you. Lucy laughed. Was my place hard to find? He flashed her a smile. Not really. I'm good at following directions. Hey, my dad backed out. Apparently he received a phone call from a certain lady who was having a barbecue at her house. So he bailed on the food truck fest? Lucy asked. I hope you don't mind if it's just us. He wasn't exactly worried, but he didn't want her to think this had been his plan from the beginning. That would make it sound too much like a date. She didn't look disappointed, though. He took that as a good sign. That's fine. More food for us. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought, he said. She stepped out into the hall and locked the door behind her. I don't get the door. He teased as they walked down the stairs together. Lucy glanced over at him, amusement in her brown eyes. Know that it's much better than your storage room, although I can't compete with the bookstore portion. I have only three bookcases. That's too bad, he said. Her cheeks dimpled. He led her to the truck and opened the passenger door for her. When she climbed in, he caught the soft scent of vanilla. Of course. After he shut her door and walked around to the driver's side, he tried to breathe in a few gulps of air to clear his senses. But once he climbed into the cab of his truck, her scent had already infiltrated the confined space. Exhaling slowly, he started the truck. Ready? He asked when, in truth, he was asking himself that question. Maybe he should have canceled after his dad backed out. Spending this much time with Lucy when not surrounded by the protection of work tasks and bookcases would not be easy on his growing attraction to her. How was your lunch today with your mom and sister? He asked. You have a good memory, Lucy said. You told me what yesterday? He said, surely I should be able to remember something longer than that. She laughed and crossed her legs. Adam pretended not to notice. It was typical, she said. Sydney is killing it with her job. They've had a record-breaking quarter in software sales. And my mom joined a ladies' golf club. She's really getting into golf with my dad now that he's retired. That's cool. Do you golf? Adam asked. Um, no. Do you? Possibly. Lucy shook her head. You're probably good at everything. Not everything. She laughed. They were impressed with my job promotion, so I have you to thank for that. He looked over at her as they stopped at a traffic light. I should be thanking you. Because of you, my dad will feel comfortable retiring. He really likes you. Lucy's cheeks pink. I'm glad. I like your dad, too. He's a great man. Adam nodded. The fact that Lucy liked his dad made Adam happier than he should admit. With the light change, he stepped on the gas pedal. They merged onto the I-5 freeway and headed toward Tacoma. While they drove, he told her some stories about his college days, and she told him about some of her past jobs, all of which ended in pretty spectacular disasters. So, no burning candles at the bookstore? He asked after she told him about getting fired for burning a candy cane scented candle at a used record shop. If I'd burned a different scent, I might still be working there, Lucy said. 
It was the Christmas scent my boss was furious about. Apparently, he's not only atheist, but agnostic. Anything having to do with religion or Christmas made him angry. Adam shook his head. They'd reached Wright Park, and he maneuvered to park between two small cars. I feel sorry for a person who has to live his life angry. Me too, Lucy said simply. Even if you don't believe in God, you should still be able to accept other people's differences. Adam popped open his door. Agreed. It looks like the rain is going to hold off. Although it was overcast, the clouds weren't threatening. We can leave the jackets in the truck, and I'll grab them if it starts to rain. Okay, she said. He didn't know if Lucy would wait for him to come around the front of the truck and open her door for her, but when she did, he suddenly had hope that maybe she was thinking of this as a date. He shouldn't get his hopes up. But truthfully, if it came to an either-or situation, he wanted her to work at the bookstore, even if it meant not ever telling her that he was very interested in dating her. They walked to the booth that marked the entrance to the fair. The admission was free, but they were handed a flyer that contained a list of food truck vendors and the scheduled times various bands and musicians were performing. This place is hopping, Lucy said. Music played from an improvised stage in the center of the park. They must be between band performances. One side of the park had a bunch of kids' games set up, including a bouncy house, an inflated slide, and families had congregated around them. At the opposite end of the park, a row of vendor tables displayed everything from handmade jewelry to wood carvings and clothing. The food trucks were situated in a wide circle around the stage, and the smells coming from them made Adam realize how hungry he was. Where do you want to go first? Lucy shrugged, then smiled up at him. The food? He grinned. I'm starving. I'm pretty hungry, too, she said. I don't usually eat my fill when I go out to lunch with my mom and sister. They eat like birds. Adam nudged her with his arm. I'll never understand women and their eating habits. If a woman doesn't eat when I take her on a date, I immediately dump her. Oh, really? Lucy laughed. I doubt that. Well, maybe I don't dump her right away. I might give her another chance or two. I'll be sure to eat enough to impress you. Her face pinked. Not that we're on a date. No, we're definitely not on a date, Adam said. His pulse was already racing, and they'd only been here five minutes. Lucy grinned as they continued walking. What sounds good? Are you a barbecue and giant hamburger kind of guy, or more of a chicken and Greek salad type? I'm not picky at all, but that smoke and Z's barbecue is calling my name. Lucy tilted her head. Wow. I heard your name coming from that truck. You're right. He laughed, and they moved to the line. And just so you know, even though this isn't a date, I'm paying my invite, my wallet. Hmm. She met his gaze. Sounds good to me. After all, you do own a bookstore, so you must be loaded. I'll always have enough money to buy you dinner. He didn't know why he kept saying things like that. They just came out. See? You're loaded. A man spoke into the microphone on the stage, announcing the upcoming group of performers. Do you want to go over and listen to them? Adam asked. Then we can be sure to give my dad a full report. In that case, sounds good to me. After they got their plates, they sat at a table near those who were listening to the music. The sun broke through the clouds, and whatever had been damp from the earlier rain dried out. The ice cream is really good, too, Adam said when they were finished with their meal. Lucy met his gaze. How many times have you been here? A few times, he said with a shrug. It was sort of a family tradition, until we all got too old to coordinate our schedules. They threw away their plates and headed toward the food truck that sold ice cream. Yeah, it's hard to coordinate schedules, she said. The only time my whole family is together now is Thanksgiving and Christmas. Adam nodded. My family's a little different because of the bookstore. I guess it's kept us close on some levels, but my sister has tried to separate herself from me and my dad as much as possible until she goes into crisis mode. Then she moves back home and takes over my dad's life. How old is she? Lucy asked. Almost 30, Adam said. Sometimes I feel bad for her, other times angry. And I can't really blame my mom's death for Darcy's actions because she was this way before my mom got sick. It was their turn to order ice cream. Adam motioned for Lucy to order first. She chose plain vanilla. He chose peppermint. They walked toward the crafts booths as they ate their cones. You know, Lucy paused to take another bite of her ice cream. I'm looking for a roommate. Adam shook his head. You don't know what you're saying. 
Lucy looked nonplussed. I won't be home much, not with my new assistant manager job. You're an amazing woman, Lucy. She blinked up at him. I'm serious. I know you're serious. That's why you're amazing. Lucy put a hand on her hip. So you're not going to take me up on my offer? Adam stared at her for a moment. They were standing in the shade of a tree, and she had a small dab of ice cream on her chin. He lifted his hand and wiped it away. She gazed at him, not moving. Leaning close, he said, no, I would never let my sister be your roommate. She arched a brow. I need a roommate anyway. It could be a win-win. I'd rather give you a raise. Lucy exhaled. You don't have to do that. I thought I'd offer. And I appreciate it, he said. I really do, but I'm not going to let my sister walk all over you like she does everyone else. Lucy bit her lip, but didn't argue. Come on, he extended his hand. Let's go see if we can do some damage to my wallet. She looked down at his hand, doubt in her expression. Then she placed her hand in his. It was a bold move to hold her hand, but he needed to get off the topic of his sister. He should never have said anything in the first place. Nine. Lucy decided it was both strange and exhilarating to hold Adam's hand. He'd offered, and she'd accepted. They walked through the craft booths, and Adam tried to talk her into getting some things, but she kept refusing. Mostly they talked and laughed, and when they arrived at the booth of a local author who was selling her young adult fantasy series, Lucy said, we should buy a couple of sets for our store. Adam looked down at her with an arched brow. Are you sure? It will be great. She turned to the beaming author. Can you sign two sets? Sure the woman said, identified only by her initials on the cover. She signed eight books with a flourish, and Adam paid for them. Lucy loaded the books into his arms with a smirk. Thanks, boss. Lead the way, assistant manager, Adam said. They walked back to the truck, teasing each other. Lucy commented that Adam must lift weights to be able to carry so many books at a time. I lift a lot of boxes of books, he said. But now that will be the new assistant manager's job. Funny. Lucy hopped in the truck, not waiting for Adam to open her door since his arms were full. When she waited for him to climb into the driver's side, she realized that for a non-date, this was the best date she'd ever been on. The drive back to Seattle was smooth with no traffic. Adam told her about a couple of his friends who'd gone to law school and about another friend who was a psychologist. When we hang out together, our conversations get pretty wild. I can imagine, Lucy said. Do you see your friends a lot? Maybe once a month at the most. What about girlfriends? She had to ask. He'd held her hand and she didn't know what to make of it. Was it because their non-date had turned into a date? Was it because he liked her more than as a friend? He glanced over at her. I don't have a girlfriend. The last woman I dated more than a couple of times was more than a year ago. She couldn't get over the storage room, Lucy teased. He exhaled. My sister ran her off. At least that's what I thought at first. Then I realized that if my girlfriend couldn't stand up to my sister as awful as she is, then maybe she wouldn't make very good wife material. Lucy knew it wouldn't be too hard to be offended by Darcy. Lucy had been on the receiving end of the woman's spite. What happened? They were almost to her apartment. Adam pulled into a parking space and stopped. We had a neighborhood Fourth of July party, and Cheryl brought peanut butter brownies, he said. I'm allergic to peanuts, so my sister freaked out, claiming that Cheryl was trying to kill me. Lucy stared at him. You're allergic to peanuts? He nodded. Instead of Cheryl telling Darcy she hadn't known about my allergy, which she hadn't, she stormed off and left. Darcy came to find me and told me what had happened from her viewpoint, of course. I called Cheryl and almost wished I'd waited until she'd cooled off. I didn't even know some of the words she called me. So that was it. The peanut butter brownies were the end of something special? Adam scoffed. I'm still not 100% sure what happened in that kitchen. Darcy tends to embellish or downplay as it suits her purposes. I thought I knew Cheryl better than I apparently did. He flexed his shoulders. So now I always confess my allergy on my first date. Lucy was silent for a moment. 
I mean, your sister was right to protect you, but it seems that after thinking about it, Cheryl would apologize to you and get back on track. Normally, that would have happened. But apparently Cheryl had some other major hang-ups about me and my family. It doesn't matter now. Ancient history. Right. Lucy stifled a yawn. Sorry, your story wasn't boring. I'm just tired. Adam chuckled. I've been talking your ear off. Thanks for taking me. The food was great, and I'm still stuffed. I'm glad you liked it. Adam opened his door and climbed out. It seemed he was going to walk her to her door. She waited as he walked around the truck and came to open her door. She felt like she knew a lot about him now, that they were friends, at least. Her pulse hummed as he opened her door, and she extended her hand so he could help her down. She didn't really need help, but they ended up standing close together as a result. She was almost disappointed when he released her hand as he reached over to shut the passenger door. She folded her arms as they walked up the stairs to her apartment. Well, I'm glad your sister found out there was peanut butter in the brownies before you ate them. Yeah, me too, although I would have tasted it on the first bite. They'd reached her door, and she turned and looked into his green eyes. What would have happened? And how allergic are you? He shrugged those broad shoulders of his. I'm not exactly sure. Throat closing, hives. I'm tested every couple of years, and the test only gives me hives, so maybe Darcy was overreacting. We still shouldn't sell any candy in the store that contains nuts. I'm not that allergic, he said. I'll have to restrain myself from sleepwalking and stealing a Snickers for a midnight snack. Lucy laughed. That would be wise. Adam's eyes seemed to darken as he watched her, and she was suddenly aware that they were very alone. They weren't surrounded by people or traffic. Thanks again, she said. I had a great time. Me too. He leaned toward her, and her mind screamed, he's gonna kiss me. And he did, sort of. He kissed her cheek, then drew away. It was sweet, endearing. And it only made Lucy want to grab him and press her mouth against his. But he was her boss. Adam liked her, that was for certain. Yet, what did it mean? Would they date and work together at the same time? Would their relationship burn out almost before it got started? Would she be fired again? I'll see you Tuesday, Adam said. Then he was gone, and Lucy was once again sitting on her couch, a book in her lap. But she couldn't focus on the words with all the thoughts of Adam swirling through her mind. On Monday, she used her official day off to return a couple of messages that had come in from potential roommates. Then she caught up on her laundry, went grocery shopping, and ran other errands in anticipation of her work schedule being so much fuller for the rest of the week. Throughout the day, she thought of Adam, their conversations, their hand-holding, the kiss on the cheek. Well, mostly she thought of how easy and fun it was to be around him. How green his eyes were, how much he loved his dad, and how, despite what he said about his sister, how much he loved her. By the time Lucy walked into work Tuesday morning, she'd created Adam into some kind of royal prince in her mind. The back door was unlocked, so Lucy assumed that either Mr. Parks or Adam had already started on the morning routine. The store wouldn't open for another 30 minutes. Hello, Lucy, Mr. Parks said from his spot at the cash register where he was punching in numbers on a calculator. Good morning, she said. Had Adam told his dad about her new position yet? Mr. Parks didn't look surprised to see her. She took that as a good sign. Mr. Parks peered up at her above his reading glasses. Looks like Adam has been holding out on me. Lucy's steps froze. Was this going to be a confrontation? According to my calculations, Adam has been saving the profits of the store instead of paying himself a regular salary. Mr. Parks tapped a sheet of paper in front of him that looked like it contained a long list of numbers. So, in theory, we can afford your salary and allow me to retire. Adam has also built in a scenario of restructuring some things and increasing their profit margin to eventually put him on a regular draw. Lucy lifted her hands. I don't want to come between you and your son. I can go back to part-time if you'd like. It hurt her to say it, but she had to offer. Mr. Parks lifted his brows. Don't let Adam hear you say that. Hear what? 
Adam had come into the store without Lucy hearing him. She turned to face him, feeling mortified. Adam was wearing a fitted T-shirt and shorts. He carried a toolbox and looked as if he was perspiring from some sort of manual labor. His green eyes steady on her made her remember how it felt to hold his hand at the fair and what he smelled like when he'd leaned in and kissed her cheek last night. I was going over the numbers like you told me to, Mr. Park said, when Lucy came in. Adam nodded and walked past Lucy, his eyes lingering on her face. He set the toolbox on the floor, then leaned on the counter to look over his dad's paper. Mm, looks right, he said. Now you can believe me that it's all right for you to fully retire. You're still welcome to spend time at the store. We'd never send you home for that. Mr. Parks chuckled. We? <laughs> now you're teaming up on me. Adam smiled. His dad threw up his hands. All right, all right. You have me convinced. You'll have to convince Darcy. Adam immediately tensed. She has nothing to do with this. She has no legal right over the business decisions, his dad said. But she's still family. She deserves the courtesy of feeling part of our plans. Adam's jaw flexed, but he nodded. Good then, Mr. Park said. I think I'll go grab some coffee. Either of you want some? No, thanks, Lucy said in a quiet voice, and Adam shook his head as well. She watched Mr. Parks leave through the front door, flipping the closed sign to open. Sorry about that, Adam said. He bent and picked up the toolbox, then set it on the counter. I was hoping to have those sorts of details straightened out before you showed up this morning, but he took his full day off yesterday. It's all right, Lucy said. I told your dad that I don't want to cause, he was at her side in three steps. Grasping her hands, he said, don't. She stared up at him. She could smell his clean scent mixed with spice. The scruff of whiskers on his face told her he hadn't shaved today. Was he taking Tuesdays off? She looked down at his hands, still holding hers. They were standing so close together that she could see his pulse beating in his neck. Adam, she said, when you touch me, I don't know what to think. I mean, we practically went on a date on Sunday and then you kissed my cheek. I know, he said in a low voice, but made no move to drop her hands. He was studying her, quite intensely, in fact, and Lucy wished she knew what was going through his mind. You're my boss, she said at last. This seemed to get through to him. He released her hands and stepped back, then scrubbed a hand through his hair. Lucy tried not to notice the way his arms flexed at the movement. Then his gaze zeroed in on hers again. I like you, Lucy, and if I wasn't your boss, then I'd have no hesitation asking you out on a real date, and not one on which my dad would tag along. But I know you're excited about this job, and I love that you're excited. That's one of the reasons that I wanted to hire you. That and the other stuff I told you. Lucy could only stare at him, speechless. But he lowered his voice again. I think you're an amazing woman. You're beautiful, charming, sweet, kind to my father. Genuine. His face took on a flush. Lucy found it all rather endearing. It's your decision, though, he continued. We could work together, period. Nothing else, or we could date and work together. Lucy's mind raced and her heart thumped. He was asking her out. He was asking her to date him. This beautiful, witty man wanted her. Finally, she found her voice. What would each entail? A small bit of relief crossed Adam's face. Well, if we only work together, then I'd have to stop finding opportunities to touch you. I wouldn't kiss you on the cheek, and I wouldn't hold your hand. I wouldn't take you to fairs or anywhere else that wasn't strictly business. Lucy stepped closer to him and placed her hands on her hips. He watched her every movement. Okay, and what would dating and working together be like? She asked. Well, his mouth twitched as if he were trying to hold back a smile. I would take you out on real dates after the store closes, of course, and I'd hold your hand quite a bit. I'd also kiss you properly and likely more than once a day, especially if the store is empty. 
heat spread across Lucy's skin. And what if we date but then decide to stop dating? What would happen to my job? He didn't hesitate with his answer. I'd be really sad, but I'd rather have you as an employee and friend than nothing at all. He took another step closer, and he kept watching her. Her heart was pounding like mad, but she knew what she wanted, and the man she wanted it with. Okay, she breathed. Let's date and work together. He didn't move, but his eyes seemed to light on fire. Are you sure? A jumble of feelings washed over her as she gazed at him. Was this really happening? She nodded. She was sure. Then he stepped toward her and leaned down, his voice nothing more than a whisper in her ear. I kiss you now. She smiled and whispered back, yes. His hands came up to cradle her face and she felt suddenly lightheaded. She knew that was exactly what he'd intended because he smiled right before he kissed her. Lucy's eyelids floated shut as Adam's warm mouth explored hers. She looped her arms around his neck and drew him closer as she kissed him back. His hands skimmed down her sides, settling at her hips. She pressed against them, enjoying the way their bodies fit together. And then he was walking her backward until they bumped into a bookcase. Sorry, he whispered. Then he kissed her again. She was trapped between Adam and the bookcase, but she didn't mind in the least. His mouth was warm, and his fingers had found an exposed part of her stomach that was bared when her shirt had written up. She felt like she was on fire, that she might incinerate at his touch. But she could tell he was holding back, keeping things at a low simmer. And she liked him all the more for it. He kissed her jawline and her neck. She protested that her neck was too ticklish against the scruff of whiskers on his face. He chuckled, his laugh vibrating against her chest, but then he drew away and gazed at her. Did I tell you you're beautiful? Maybe once, she teased. Hmm. He smoothed the flyaway strand of hair from her face. I'm so glad you chose dating and working. This is so much better than working. She grinned. Then she tugged him toward her and kissed him again. He responded immediately, and his hand tangled in her hair as he tasted her. The door to the store opened with an unmistakable bell chime, and Adam lifted his head. His gaze was searing as he released her and stepped away. It sounded as if several people had walked in. They were unusually lively and chattering for this early in the morning. Lucy closed her eyes and exhaled as Adam walked around the bookcase to greet their customers. She waited a moment to compose herself and to catch her breath while she listened to Adam talk to the customers about an upcoming new release. She could get used to this, kissing Adam behind a bookcase, hearing him tell her she was beautiful, watching his green eyes gaze at her with affection. She gave a happy little sigh, then joined Adam in helping their customers. Adam's gaze went to hers as soon as she approached and they shared a knowing smile. She didn't know how everything would play out between them, but she was looking forward to finding out. Lucy smiled to herself as she moved around the store, unpacking new stock that had arrived that morning. She found Adam's gaze on her more than once. Mr. Parks returned to the store in a cheerful mood, and she and Adam shared a secret smile. I think I'll go home and catch up on a few things. Mr. Parks looked from Lucy to Adam. Sounds great, Dad. Adam said, we've got things covered. Mr. Parks nodded. I can see that you do. Take good care of my son. Lucy stared after him. When the door shut behind him, she turned to Adam. Does your dad know about us? How could he know? She wondered. She barely knew herself. Adam came to stand by her. I think he guessed. I mean, you've been staring at me all morning. Funny. Lucy slipped into his arms, surprised at how natural it felt already. So, Adam said, every August we do inventory. Are you ready to learn the ropes? I love it when you talk business, boss. He grinned and bent down, giving her a light kiss, one she enjoyed very much. Great, I hope the tedium won't drive you away, he said, pressing his lips against her neck. Maybe we can take some breaks here and there? She ran her hands over his shoulders. Lots of breaks. 
He lifted his head, holding her gaze. That sounds good to me. He took her hand, and they walked to the cash register together. Then he pulled up the inventory lists on the laptop. As Adam explained the inventory procedures they had to go through, she couldn't help but smile to herself. Who would have thought walking in here on that rainy day several weeks ago would change her life? Even her sister would have a hard time believing it. Lucy fully intended to tell her sister more about Adam, but for now, she was going to be selfish and keep them all to herself. This has been Falling for Lucy, written by Heather B. Moore, narrated by Exie Sands. Copyright 2018 by Heather B. Moore. Production copyright 2018 by Heather B. Moore.